Okay. Uh, years ago, um, I came up and, and thinking about big league hitters and kind of what they do, you know, how distinct they are in many ways from everybody else. You know, I came up with this idea of uh, you know, a simple notion of you know how to describe big league hitters. So I kind of said, you know, what these guys are doing is actually pretty damn simple. Uh, they know how to tilt over, which is this kind of hip flexion thing, deadlift like posture that I refer to. They know how to tilt over, hold on to the bat, and just turn. And, you know, simply put, what that means is they know how to create a very good posture. They know how to link the, the knob and the bat to the rotation. They don't do a whole lot of extra or, you know, misdirected, extra meaning they're not doing a whole lot of stuff when they're just turning. And when they, this results in this barrel kind of flying out and around the body in a very powerful and relatively precise and relatively good way. So this, this notion of good hitters know how to hang on the damn bat and just and, and tilt over and just turn. Uh, it was a kind of, as I refer to it, as a kind of a zen-like uh, phrase you won't know what the hell I'm talking about unless you're either, you know, very, you know, have a very good understanding of some, you know, aspects of physics, biomechanics, if you kind of understand the compound pendulum that I talked about. If you understand that well, you have a pretty good idea, certainly an idea of where I'm coming from. And if you can do it pretty well, and you start thinking about what you're actually doing, you start looking at yourself when you're actually doing it. If you do it well, um, you kind of say, yeah, I kind of see what you're talking about. Obviously, I did not mean the loading aspects of the swing. You know, this, this phrase went out uh, some years ago. People attack it and say, Steve, you know, hitters do more than that. Well, of course they do more than that. Uh, I'm not talking about stance, setup, stride. I'm talking about wherever they start out. Remember years ago, the Red, Red Council kind of started out up like this really high, but by the time he gets foot plane, he's here, he just starts turning. Uh, he knows how to tilt over the hole and then back, just turn when he unloads the swing. Uh, all the elite level hitters, all big league hitters, really know how to do this pretty well. And, you know, it seems like uh, there, there must be some other things that have to be done. I need to create this move or that move. No, uh, you need to link the back up to the rotation really well. And good things happen when you do that. That's basically my argument. Uh, as I've said numerous times, um, uh, from a conceptual standpoint, and a, and a fairly simple but relevant and very powerful kind of conceptual standpoint, uh, Swing Batwell is all about creating and transferring momentum. This, now, there, there's lots of aspects of how to understand that and, and how to determine how well somebody is doing this. But conceptually, that's what it's all about. How do I get my body? to create movement and energy, the effect of which somehow gets into the bat head. And this notion of hang on to the damn bat and just turn uh, out of a good posture, basically, uh, this is what good hitters are doing. This is how they're able to create and transfer momentum in, in, in a very uh, powerful and precise and consistent manner. So uh, numerous criticisms about this, but like I say, um, the, they come from people who typically are not elite level hitters. And they're people that typically, since they're not elite level hitters, they tend to use their arms. So most people are arm swingers. And when they start, when I hear a phrase like that, tilt over, just hold on to them, bat and turn, uh, you know, if they're not understanding that I'm just talking about the unloading aspects of it, uh, if, they're if they're thinking, unload by doing stuff with the arms, well, they're thinking that because they don't know how to swing the bat well. Uh, it's not, I'm not being, trying to be critical, I'm being honest. I've seen this many, many times. If you don't, that's why I refer to it as a Zen-like phrase. If you know how to turn, if you know how to create a pretty good posture, you know how to turn well, and you know how to create relative stability of body parts as you, as you turn, the bat can't help but come around in a very powerful and accurate manner. I mentioned in another context the notion of the iron Byron, which is a model developed by an engineer of a compound pendulum. Uh, he's utilized that concept. He has a 
machine that has a torso and has a lead arm and the golf club is linked to the lead arm and this thing turns and it, you know, I think it turns about the average speed of, of the PGA golfer and it hits balls consistently 300 yards within 10 feet from the, from the, tee, from the hole every time. So it's a very compelling model. It just has a lead arm and a torso and it has rotation. And in terms of how the bat, a lot of people don't kind of can't fathom they, uh, how the bat head somehow gets out and around here. They think you've got to do some kind of active uncocking, active pushing kind of action. In fact, you don't. To go back to Robert Adair, physics emeritus from Yale University, wrote a book called The Physics of Baseball. He talks about in his book, he kind of, he mentions, a, he, he talks about how this bat uncocks, and he says this. Uh, in a 90 mile an hour bat speed at contact, let's say a swing that yields 90 miles an hour at contact, as the body is turning, and I'm hold, tilting over, holding on down, bat turning, as I get to right about here, there's a buildup of momentum uh, such that if I keep turning, this bat will eventually start going to fly out and around my body. Eventually, it wants to fly as they, as they kind of talk, a tangent to the circle. So I've got this circle of me turning, the bat actually wants to fly out and around, and it's going to do that. And what Robert mentions is the fact that up to 200 pounds of force, pressure, is responsible for pushing this bat out and around the body. That force is known as centrifugal force. It's a pseudo force in the sense that it's not on its own doing anything. It is a function of me turning or anybody turning. So the fact is you keep turning if this bat's well connected to the body, which elite level hitters it is well connected to the body. I'm not moving up, down, bending, straightening, any number of things in here people do with the arm. No, I'm holding on to the damn bat and just turning. And you do that fast enough and well enough, the bat's going to fly out and around because there's 200 pounds of pressure. That force, that out and around, that centrifugal force, that is what is going to uncock the wrist. So if you think about your wrist, they're not strong enough. I don't know if any of you guys can try to curl, you know, some kind of action here, 200 pounds, try to curl. Good luck with that. Your wrist is not going to be strong enough to handle that kind of force. So what happens when this, when this force starts pushing and affect this bat out and around the body? The wrist on cock. That's how zen-like it is. If I just hold on to the bat and maintain good connection, this bat basically has to to uncock around my body. I've got a big bat here, kind of demonstrating. You know, I'm actually trying now to keep from uncocking this bat. Uh, I can't do it, right? So, you can see, and this is just a you know, fairly simple demonstration of me holding on the damn bat and turning, but you can see the effects of the body, body's motion on this bat head. Pulling the entire body, including back around, past the contact point of this area. So that's what this, you know, sin like phrase, that's what it means. That's, you know, the, what everything I've said hopefully explains this once and for all. So I, you know, I don't have to hear these criticisms about, you know, uh, Steve doesn't understand that there's a lot more to the swing. Well, yeah, some ways there are, but then again, some ways they're not. Because it is undeniably the case, from my vantage point, that good hitters do, in fact, know how to tilt over, create a very good tilt, know how to hang on to the damn bat, meaning they're not doing a whole lot with the arms once they start, and they know how to turn well. And that's what's driving their really good swings. So, just wanted to throw that out there for consideration. Uh, any questions on any of this, certainly always feel free to write me at uh, uh, EnglishBeeHitting.com. Uh, certainly, uh, we can continue the conversation there.